Hi, I'm Newton Chatta with DLA Public Affairs, and this is the DLA Wrap. This is your opportunity to get to know DLA people and DLA programs on a more personal level. Today, my special guest is a Daryl Roberts, DLA's Chief Information Officer. Welcome to the DLA Wrap. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks for having me, Newton. So the first question I want to ask you is how long have you been with the Defense Logistics Agency, and how did you happen to come here? So I've been a proud member of DLA since 2010. Started as the program manager for what was then known as Wide Area Workflow. Once I transitioned from the program management position, I was what we call a portfolio manager in J6. Then I took a hiatus from supporting at the program level and was chosen to support what was then the Center of Business Systems Excellence, Went back to being a portfolio manager. I then had the opportunity to become the PEO um, in 2019. And now you're the chief information officer. What do you think when I say that chief information officer? A lot of responsibility, a privilege to, to lead a group of professionals that we have in J6, supporting what I believe is the most diverse, important mission um, in the Department of Defense. We're sitting shoulder to shoulder with the services as they're forward deployed peacetime mission, wartime mission, as well as whole of government supporting national disasters. What do you like about being a leader? The mentoring part, the ability to influence the next generation of DLAers. My staff would probably say two hands on, (laughs) but I would say my, my leadership style is I like to empower. And through that empowerment, there's accountability. I don't want folks to look at it as what is Mr. Roberts' plan, what does Mr. Roberts want to do Uh, But you need that buy-in as a leader so that it becomes our plan, so everyone's invested, and that you understand the big picture. Where did you grow up? Born in North Carolina, raised by the Army. Um, So my dad was um, 30-plus years in the Army, retired as Command Sergeant Major. And how would you describe yourself as a child? What what were you like? Very curious, um, as my mother would say, um, because I said so didn't really work. Um, you, you need to give me a plausible explanation, and if I didn't like it, I still would try. Um, I, I loved math growing up, so I went to college initially saying, hey, I'm going to be an accountant. Um, of course, every boy grows up saying, hey, I want to be a professional athlete. High school and college reality kicked in, and it was, okay, what am I going to do long term? And I thought it was going to be accounting, um, and then I did it for a couple years, joined ROTC, and decided, no. I think I want to do contracting, um, which led to four years in the Air Force doing contracting, eventually getting out, working for a private company, and becoming a civilian. Who have been some of your role models? I will say um, Captain James Wilder. He was my ROTC um, commander. Closer to home, I would say my grandmother um, is a role model. Didn't have an opportunity to finish high school large family, had to go to work, Um, but education remained her focus, and she made sure her children and her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, had an opportunity for education. So it sounds like you had a very good relationship with your grandmother. She was a sharecropper. She was a nurse. She was a mother to everybody in the community. She was a survivor. She shared some stories and some anecdotes, but she was really looking for it. But we definitely understood her upbringing, the challenges she had as a Young black woman growing up in the South, raising children. She is 95. So you served in the military. Which service, how long, and what does it mean to you to be a veteran? The best service in the world, United States Air Force. My father served 30-plus years in the Army. I've had uncles that have served in the Navy and the Army as well. Doing something greater than yourself has kind of been instilled in me early in life, and um, just proud to support the country, our freedoms. Where do you live and what's your commute? I live in Richmond, Virginia. Um, I get to enjoy I-95 South um, for an hour and a half each way every day. Um, A lot of people say I'm crazy for doing it, but I love what I do. Um, It's a choice. What are some of the myths about information operations or J6 that you would like to dispel? Yeah, so the biggest bit, I, I think, what's on everyone's mind is when we talk about automation, artificial intelligence. 
Um, we're not trying to put technology out there to take over the world, replace the workforce. What we're doing from a technology perspective is really enhancing the DLA employees' abilities to meet mission. Um, the secret sauce of DLA will always be their people. What do you love about your job? It's the people and the mission. There's a lot of pride that comes into seeing what we do from a J6 perspective, support DLA's mission, and seeing the output of that. If you look at the COVID support that DLA did throughout um, the two, four years of COVID, um, supporting efforts in Yukon with the Ukraine, national disasters that are occurring, a lot of that is on the back of IT and, and infrastructure that we've put in. So just seeing that output and our ability to support the nation and working with people, that's, that's what I love every day. What are your goals as CIO? My first goal is really to focus on the user, the user experience. How do we make it more streamlined? I think a lot of people come into DLA and between your training, between your day-to-day -day work, your timekeeping, et cetera, you have to log into a lot of applications and the biggest complaint I get is I got logged out and didn't save my work. So we want to streamline that by creating a DLA platform, an employee portal, where once you log in during the day, you can do your work continuously throughout the day. So digital business transformation, um, everyone's heard about it. Everyone loves it. I know. Um, but that's a big thing, too, because we want to maximize the use of commercial products because those commercial products are the ones that give you the most commercial user experience. So do you have a philosophy by which you live? I think the biggest one that I would say I, I use in DLA every day, and my team's heard me say it often, um, being comfortable, being uncomfortable. Um, the world's always changing. Life is always changing. You have to adjust to different factors that happen in your life. Um, so I try to be comfortable being uncomfortable um, so that I can be rational in my decision making. So you have a very high visibility job, a high stress job. What do you do in your spare time or on your days off to relieve the stress? It may surprise some people, but I try to spend time with my 14 year old who doesn't want to spend time with me. Other interests I have, I like festivals, music festivals, food festivals. Who's your favorite basketball team? So I'm a Carolina guy. Um, so UNC college basketball is my favorite. Um, but a Lakers fan my whole life. Favorite player? Has to be Michael Jordan. What is one thing about you that may surprise people? Wow, that's a good one. Um, I'm not a trained IT person. I think that's the, the one thing that most folks, given my position and, and what I talk about every day, what I'm asked to be in charge of, um, I, I did not specialize in college in IT, cybersecurity, um, or anything from a J6 perspective. This is something mid-career um, that I took an interest in and developed that skill set and, and got the experience um, to be where I am today. So I, am, I do not code <laughs> and do not have the ability to code. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and the opportunity. No, thanks so much for having me, Nick. And I want to thank all of you for joining us today on the DLA Rep.